Hi, I'm Scott Flowers with Cloud Ninjas. Today we're here to talk about a golden oldie, the HP Proliant DL360G5. And specifically, we're going to focus on how to upgrade the memory and talk about some of the CPU options. Let's get rolling. Well, hey, thanks for stopping by today to learn a little bit more about the HP Proliant DL360G5. Do us a favor, if you find anything in this video useful, click that like and smash that subscribe. All right, well, let's get rolling. Uh, first things first, this is a, a six bay, small form factor chassis. Uh, all the drives are hot swap. Uh, there are uh, two CPUs inside. The CPU socket is an LGA771, which means this takes Intel Xeon 5100, 5200, 5300, and 5400 series CPUs. We recommend definitely going with the 53 and 5400 series just because this is an older machine, uh, so you definitely want to use something a little bit better, and the, the fact that the CPUs are so cheap nowadays, uh, we definitely recommend getting uh, something like a 5345, a 5420, uh, something in that, that general range would be uh, you know, really cheap and be a, a good overall boost for this machine, especially if you're using dual core procs. As far as the RAM is concerned, it takes DDR2 memory and there are eight DIMM slots inside. You can use 667 or 800 speed RAM. 667 is generally what it is you know, uh, most prevalent in what everyone is using. Uh, 800 is a little bit more of a unicorn part, so pretty much everything that everyone is using is 667. Uh, as far as the different DIMM sizes are concerned, you can use a 1 gig, 2 gig, 4 gig, or all the way up to 8 gig. No, unfortunately, with DDR2, there are no 16 gig modules, so 8 gig will be the highest, meaning that most that you can put in this machine is 64 gigabytes at 8 by 8 at uh, 800 speed, which realistically 667 is what you're going to get. So, uh, as far as the type of RAM you can use, you can use one type of RAM fully buffered memory, which is also known as an FB DIMM. No, you cannot use ECC registered, and no, you cannot use load reduce if you were thinking about it, even though the load reduce never existed for DDR2, but you might think about that that's something that you can use, but unfortunately people do grab RDIM sometimes or ECC registered and think they can put them in this machine and you can't. Uh, the notch on the uh, on the, uh, the DIM itself, which we'll show you here in a minute, is actually in a different spot, so you physically can't install the ECC registered, so just make sure uh, if you're upgrading this you get fully buffered FB DIMs, okay? All right, well now that we know a little bit more about the CPUs and RAM, I'm gonna show you how to physically upgrade it, show you a little bit more about the channels inside, uh, but before we do, I'm gonna put on my, uh, my ESD gloves just to make sure that we keep the parts protected and I'll be right back. All right, now that we have our ESD gear on, we're safe to open the machine. If you don't have ESD at home, that it is okay. You know, I'm aware that uh, not everyone has ESD in their data center, or, and you might be using this at home as a home lab server or something. You might have ESD at home. Uh, all I would say is just make sure you're doing it on, uh, you know, a desktop, or if you're in, it's in a rack, that's obviously great at your data center, um, and try not to... Um, or try to touch something metal in advance uh, just to help dissipate some of the ESD that might be on your hands. Those would be the things I recommend if you don't have ESD gear. So anyhow, make sure it's set to unlock. Pop the, the tab open, lift the top up, pretty much like any machine you've really ever been in before. Um, so as we discussed, there are two CPUs. This is CPU 1 and this is CPU 2. Uh, if you want to utilize all eight DIMM slots, you need to make sure you have both CPUs inside. So CPU 1 controls the first four DIMM slots right here, and CPU2 controls the next four DIMM slots over here. Um, as far as, uh, you know, the, the channels are concerned, we're going to go ahead and show you them, but honestly, this machine is an older machine. Max it out. Put in 88 gigs. Uh, there's really no sense in running anything else if you're using this machine. Um, it, it, you can get 88 gigs for 100 bucks these days. That's uh, a, a cheap upgrade. It's well worth it to boost the performance. Uh, we're still going to show you all the channels and everything, uh, but I just wanted to throw that out there before we do. If you're, you know, debating on, uh, maybe I'm only going to put, you know, 16, 32, 16 or 32 gigs, put 64. You, you will appreciate it long term. Uh, the boost is worth it. Okay. So anyhow, so as far as the channels are concerned, this is going to be 1A. This is 3A. This is 2C. This is 4C. Okay. Um, and it might be better if I do it over here, actually, so you can see it a little bit better. So uh, I'll repeat it. This is uh, 1A, this is 3A, this is 2C, this is 4C. And you come over here, and this is on the uh, second CPU side. This is going to be 5B. You skip right here, and you go 7B, 6D, 8D. Okay. Um, that is how the chat. Uh, I'm sorry. That's how the DIMMs are labeled. Um, and that is how you would uh, basically install them. So if you weren't maxing it out, you want to make sure you would. Uh, the first two would be 
uh, 1A and 3A, and then uh, if you again only had one CPU, then you'd go right here. If you had two CPUs, then what I would recommend would be 1A, 3A, uh, 5B, 7B if you're only putting four modules. But again, put in eight modules. You'll appreciate it long term, okay? All right, so I want to go over a couple of tips with you. So first thing first, uh, if you look at this dim right here, okay, you will notice that there's a notch in the middle. This notch is known as the key. This is what we were talking about that is different between the fully buffered module and the ECC registered module is that the key is in a different spot. So if you try to install it, there's a little um, plastic clip that comes up in the, the module. And I shouldn't call it a clip because it's not a clip, but if there's a little plastic piece um, and you have to make sure you line it up properly. Uh, if you don't line it up properly, you could potentially damage the, the dim or you could damage the dim slot, which would mean you might have to get a new motherboard or you just wouldn't be able to use that dim slot neither are situations you want so just a simple common thing that we recommend line it up properly okay once you line it up and another thing i actually like to recommend mine are already all open because i was just showing you all make sure all your tabs are open uh, it's a little thing uh, that you, again you don't have to do it but these are things that i do and i recommend because my goal is to protect the parts protect the machine uh, if it takes an extra second it's well worth it because we don't want any issues okay all right so we're going to put the first dim here in 1a we've got it lined up properly and we put it in. Okay, now one thing I want to note is it's actually not in. Uh, so if you were to fire on the machine right now, it wouldn't register the module at all. You want to make sure you hear these two clicks. And you'll notice the tab is much further in than the tabs out here. That's how you know that the module is actually fully seated. Uh, one of the things I recommend at the very end, once you've installed all your dims, is just to do a quick look at all your tabs and make sure that they are all in because uh, you might see something as simple as like I'll show you right here and it might be kind of tough to see on camera maybe we'll scroll in a little bit to help but you see this is kind of sticking out and it, it, it's, it looks like the, the modules in but really that module is not fully seated so if you fired on the machine you would have an error so again this is a real common error um, well someone will, will contact us and say hey you know we got a bad dim um, you know what do we do and the first thing we always recommend is just rotate your modules around because nine times out of ten the module was just not seated properly they rotate it around and they're like hey it magically works yep it just needed to be reseated so it's a, a simple error I do it all the time and I've been doing this 20 years uh, it's just something that uh, people do and it's a really easy thing to do so all right well I'm gonna finish loading this up and we're gonna fast forward All right, so you will see we have upgraded it. Uh, like I said, I like to make sure all these tabs are fully in so everything is properly seated. We're good to go. We've maxed this out with 64 gigabytes. It's gonna be a huge boost in performance for this machine as a whole. So do us a favor. If you're looking to upgrade your DL360G5, email us at sales at cloudengines.com. That's sales at cloudengines.com. We'd love to help you out and we'd love to quote you. And we've got a ton of DDR2 that we'd love to send to you. So again, sales at cloudengines.com. And if you made it this far, hey, click that like, smash that subscribe. Thanks a lot and take care.